Hi, Pastor Jim Rose here from the North Buffalo Grace Brethren Church in Catanning, Pennsylvania. I want to thank you for tuning in and allow me again to share God's precious word with you. We're going to continue our study on the attributes of God, and uh, we serve an awesome God. Amen? Mm -hmm. He is truly awesome. And uh, today we're going to be talking about that God is omnipotent. And you might be asking, well, what is omnipotent mean? Well, it means almighty or all-powerful. This means that the one and only true God, that is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, has the ability and empower to do anything. That is, anything that is consistent with his nature and his character. For example, God cannot lie because that goes against his character. Well, you know, God's power is infinite. That means it is boundless, limitless. And he is the almighty, all-powerful one. In the Bible, God is described as the almighty at least 57 times. You know, Job realized that absolute strength and might belong to God alone. He said, if it is a matter of power, indeed, he, that is God, is the strong one. That is in Job 9, 19. And also in Revelation 19, 6, the Apostle John explains, he says, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Even one of the Hebrew names for God, El Shaddai, speaks of his power. El refers to God, and Shaddai means almighty. That name refers to his awesome strength and power. When God exercises his power, we need to understand that he's different than us. He does so effortlessly. It is no more difficult for him, that is for God, to create a universe than to make a flower. The, the man by the name of A.W. Tozer wrote about this. He said, quote, Since he has at his command all the power in the universe... The Lord God, omnipotent, can do anything as easily as anything else. All his acts are done without effort. He expends no energy that must be replenished. That definitely is different than us, isn't it? His self-sufficiency makes it unnecessary for him to look outside of himself for renewal of strength. All the power required to do all that he wills to do lies in undiminished fullness in his own infinite being, unquote. Uh, the, we, that is amazing. We serve an amazing God. Because God's power is infinite, he does not become weary and tired like we do. Isaiah 40, verse 28 says, Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator, Creator of the ends of the earth neither faints nor is weary. Well, you know, a question might be going through your mind right now. If God never gets tired, why does it say in Genesis 1 or Genesis 2 verses 1 through 3 that he rested on the seventh day of creation? Well, the answer is God didn't literally rest as we know or experience rest. He merely finished his work of creation, that is, the rest of satis satisfaction and completion of a job well done. God used creation to teach us the principle of one day of rest in seven. Our awesome God does not get tired. You know, when we think about the expression of God's power, God's power is expressed in an infinite number of ways. But one of the ways that God expresses his power is in creation. Genesis 1.1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. In Psalm 33.6, David praises our creator God, saying, By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and all the hosts of them by the mouth, breath of his mouth. The prophet Jeremiah proclaims in the book of Jeremiah 10.12, he says, He, that is God, has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom and has stretched out the heavens at his discretion. 
In Isaiah 45, 18, the prophet Isaiah exclaims, he says, For thus says the Lord, who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who established it, who did not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is no other. You know, thinking about God's creation should cause us to appreciate his awesome, great power. Yet God's power is greater than anything he has ever made. Uh, you know, our response to that should be, wow. Because, you know, you can look up into the stars up in the heavens, and especially at nighttime, and see all the stars up there, all those uh, uh, planets and, and all those uh, galaxies out there. You know, they say that there's a, a hundred billion uh, stars in our galaxy alone, but they believe that there's over a hundred billion, maybe a trillion more galaxies out there. But yet God measured it all by the span of his hand, and he looks down on this, this universe, and the earth is his footstool. Wow, we serve an awesome God, don't we? You know, uh, what God, the scriptures teach us that what God creates, he also maintains, preserves, and sustains. Hebrews 1, 3 says, upholding all things by the word of his power. The Greek word translated uphold here means to support or to maintain. It is used in the present tense implying continuous action. God is sustaining, listen to this now, God is sustaining everything in the universe every second of every day. If God were to let go of sustaining it, it would all disintegrate into nothing. God is keeping it all together. Another wonderful way that God's power is expressed is in salvation. Aren't you glad that God made a way for us to be saved, delivered, rescued from the penalty and guilt of our sin? The Apostle Paul reminds us of this in Romans 1.16 when he said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also for the Greek. You see, the power of the gospel transforms a person from a dead state of sin to abundant, eternal, joyful life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Ephesians 2, verses 4 and 5 talk about this. It says, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. And he goes on to say, For by grace you have been saved. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... He is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You see, salvation is a powerful work of God. When God begins that great work in a person, he will bring it to conclusion. Yes, all the way to the finish of it. Philippians 1, 6 says, He who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of of Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful to know there's not enough devils and demons in this world that can stop your or your salvation or take it away. It is eternal and God's the one that's in control of that. Well, you know, one of the great displays of God's power is the resurrection, his ability to raise the dead. In John 10 verses 17 and 18, Jesus says, I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power, Jesus says, to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. Christ was able to face death not only because of the Father's power, but also because of his own power, because he is God. In Acts 3, verses 14 and 15, Peter preaches to the, Jews, the Jewish people, saying, but you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the Prince of Life whom God raised from the dead of which we are witnesses. And there's many, many other passages that talk about the wonderful uh, uh, thought about the resurrection. We, Jesus Christ, he was put on the cross uh, and he was raised from the dead for our 
justification. So thank you, Jesus, for raising from the dead so that we could be justified, that is, declared uh, not guilty of our sin. Well, when we think about applying God's power to our life, how does God's power apply to our lives as believers? Well, let's look at it this way. How about for confidence? God's power is a source of confidence for us. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. So it's his power that's inside of us that through his power, uh, we, we are able to do, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. How about Philippians 14? Uh, 413, a lot of you, some of you have got that verse memorized. I can do all things through Christ who does what? Strengthens me. Yes. And Psalm 27, 1 says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And we don't want to forget about 1 Thessalonians 5, 24. He says we can accomplish that uh, we can accomplish all that God calls us to do in the strength of his power. Not our power, his power. How about Romans 8.31? If God is for us, who can be against us? Well, the answer obviously is no one or nothing. Because God is greater than anything we will ever have to face. The second way that God's power is applied to our lives as believers is, how about for hope? Hope is a wonderful word. Hope for the believer means what? Confident expectation that good is coming based upon the promises of God. God's resurrection power is the basis of our hope. 1 Peter 1.3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and it goes on to say, who are kept by the power of God. Well, what might be another way God's power applies to our lives as believers? How about for comfort? You ever need any comfort sometimes? Well, 2 Corinthians 1, verses 3 and 4 tells us that our God is the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation. When you find yourself worrying about something, remember and realize anew that there is nothing too great for God to handle. And he's holding you in, your, in his hands and working all things out for your good. In Genesis 18, 14, the Lord said to Abraham, or actually asked a question, he said, is anything too hard for the Lord? Well, obviously the answer is no, nothing is too hard for our Lord. Jeremiah, Jeremiah reminds us of this truth in Jeremiah 32, 17. He says, Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. And another wonderful thing is that God really cares about us. The God who is all-powerful, almighty, cares about every detail of our life. 1 Peter 5, verses 6 and 7 reminds us of that, saying, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, because he cares for you. Isn't it wonderful to know that the almighty, sovereign, creator God of the universe cares about every little detail of our lives as his children? A man by the name of Stephen Charnook shares some reassuring thoughts on this subject. He says, quote, As omnipotence is an ocean that cannot be fathomed, so the comforts from it are streams that cannot be exhausted. How comforting to know you have a God who can do what he pleases. There is nothing so difficult that he can't accomplish. Nothing so strong that he can't overrule. You need not dread men since you have one to restrain them. His power was not all expended in the creation. It is not weakened by his preservation of all things. 
for whom would the Lord display his eternal arm and the incomprehensible thunder of his power, but for his own, unquote. Wow. Yes, God wants to display his power for his children, and he wants us to trust him with all of his heart. God's power brings great comfort to us as believers. Well, what is another way God's power is applied to our lives as believers? How about for victory in our lives when it seems like everything is falling apart and, 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 and we're in despair? Well, we can have, be overcomers and have spiritual victory because of what? God's power. In Ephesians 1.19, Paul used four different words to describe the power that God uses or gives to us in taking care of. He said, What is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead? So you see that same power that God the Father used in raising Jesus from the dead is the same power that is inside of us as believers. It's that same power that God is able to use to help us in any way, anything that we need in life. And so you could say, in a sense, God has given us incredible, incredible power. Why? Because he lives inside of us. Many times we might find ourselves saying we don't have enough power or strength to handle a situation. Well, and really, that, that is true because in and of ourselves, we don't have that power. But God's great power is available. That's what we need to remember. And sufficient for every need we will have. Also in Ephesians 6.10, Paul tells us to be what? Strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. You see, to experience spiritual victory, we must be like a guard on watch. When the enemy comes, we are not uh, supposed to fight him ourselves, but we are to submit to our commander, and he will lead the battle and win the victory for us. James 4, 7 says, Therefore, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and what do you say will happen? He will flee from you. Not because he's afraid of us, oh no, but because he is afraid of the Almighty God, and he cannot stand against him. So if we submit ourselves to God, get, that is, get under him, then God becomes our everything. He becomes our shield. He becomes our, our protector. He becomes all that we need. In Ephesians 6.10, Paul tells us, that, you know, that again, to be strong, not in our power, but in the power of God's might. You know, we talk about, we've been talking about all God's power here. So the question is, what should be our response to God's awesome, great, mighty, and glorious power? Well, first of all, I think it should be humility. This means total surrender of our will to God's will. That's not always easy to do, is it, for us? Because with our sin nature, we really want things our way a lot of times. We act, really act like children who want to be very selfish and self-focused, uh, but God wants us to surrender our will to his will. This means that the focus of our life is not on what we want, but on what God wants for us each and every day. 1 Peter 5, 6 says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. You see, apart from God, how much can we do, the Bible tells us. What Jesus said in John 15, he said, Without me, you can do nothing. We need to remember that if we are truly humble, we will be what? We will be obedient to the Lord. Well, what else should be our response to God's awesome, great, mighty, and glorious power? How about worship? Yes, we need to worship him. What is, when you think about worship, what does it mean? Well, worship means that we are to ascribe to God his worth. We are to praise and honor and magnify him for who he is and for what he has done for us. We are to worship God because of his infinite power and how he, he has used that power to rescue us, deliver us, and allow us to serve him. 
God said to his people in 2 Kings 17, 36, The Lord, who brought you up from the land of Egypt with great power and with an outstretched arm, him you shall fear, and to him you shall bow yourselves down. You see, we ought to meditate more, not on our problems, no, not on the negative circumstances around us, no, but on God's power and his promises that he's given to us. Doing so will help us focus less on our problems. Yes, you remember what Isaiah 26, 3 says? It says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. We need to keep our minds in our hearts stayed on the Lord, trusting in him. If we do that, God promises perfect peace in our hearts. And we don't want to forget Luke 137, which says, For with God, nothing will be impossible. So here's our question. Is your life shouting out how great God is? Well, we need to turn to him, look to him, focus on him, and be thinking about his great power and how it's being used in our lives and ask God to help us that we can submit and surrender to him so that his power can be manifested and be brought out for his glory. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for reminding us in your word about your great, awesome power. Lord, you are omnipotent, the almighty, all-powerful God. Nothing impossible for you to do consistent with your character. Lord, I pray and ask that you would help us to remember that, Lord, when it seems like things in our lives are falling apart and nothing is going right. Lord, help us that we will just look to you, turn to you, depend on you. And Lord, that we will remember that, Lord, you are for us and not against us. And you're going to use your great power to give us victory in our lives. Father, we thank you and we praise you. And we press you, praise your blessed name, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name, and amen. I want to remind everyone, this coming Sunday, we're going to have our first Sunday, June the 7th, here at North Buffalo GBC. Looking forward to see you. God bless you. Bye-bye. At 1045.